hello and welcome to jasonnewland.com My name is Jason Newland and this is Let Me Bore You to Sleep. Please only listen to this when you can safely close your eyes. There may be a few background sounds because I'm recording this at 8.17 in the morning. Andre is awake and the birds are in the garden singing and I sent them all letters asking them if they could keep it down um, but they've not responded. I actually had someone Oh, it's um, I don't know what it was was it on iTunes or something someone complained uh, I think it was for the Deep Sleep Whisper Hypnosis podcast someone complained because there were the birds in the, in the background um, because in the summer like especially spring onwards the birds are up really early and I'd be making a recording at maybe 3 o'clock 4 o'clock in the morning and they'd be wide awake out there so I won't make one of those recordings today yet anyway but uh, as promised <laughs> sitting in my chair, my big black squeaky chair, as promised in my last Let Me Bore You To Sleep, I am going to talk about something completely different to what I've ever, ever spoken about before, and you may recall that I've started a little book collection of subjects which may be, or that I can talk about, you know, dip into for these these recordings. And if there's a subject that you'd like me to talk about with stamp collecting or fossils or the history of lavatories, anything like that, um, just go to my website and uh, you can send me, you can send me that information, send me a book and I will read out of it, read bits of it. I'm not actually going to read it verbatim, but uh, so I got this book, got it from a charity shop. should have cost £12.99 or when it was first published Uh, it actually looks brand new doesn't look like it's even been touched well not touched I mean I can't that's weird there's no Oh yeah, it does. This is from 2006. um, But reprinted in 2009. So... It's basically a book on choosing and keeping chickens. in association with Practical Poultry Magazine by Chris Graham and it cost me two pound and let's have a look yes 200 pages lots of pictures and I thought it would be I mean, there's lots of books I could have chosen from. There's quite a few books. 
but I didn't want to carry them around. So I had to go into town yesterday and I went into a two or three charity shops just to have a little look what books were there and I found one charity shop I just realised there may be background sound when I said there may be background sounds there may actually be from the sounds of it more sounds than I realised so um damn basically there's garages being rebuilt and they're not allowed to start work until 8.30 that's 8.23 and unfortunately these are people that like to make noise as there gets them off I think so they'll be banging away so depends what I'll do even if it even if they are noisy I'm just going to continue doing this but uh, it's not ideal is it that's why I'm up all night that's why I try and do these at night because during the day it can be quite soundy so the contents hatching and rearing you know what I've noticed is I'm looking through this book there's lots of pictures of chickens I didn't realise there were so many different types of chickens so there's a chicken here it's yellow with a red mohawk and it's almost like a little red flower with a beak but the eyes are really old eyes if that makes sense they look almost not very bloodshot and Kind of almost like I've seen everything, you know. There's nothing I haven't seen. You know how old I am. Oh, there's another chicken here. Being held by two. One's being held by... Well, I don't know if they're related, but she's holding this kid. Uh, looks... I know, I thought she was really short, but she's not. She's kneeling down. So, possibly her grandkid might not even be related. Um, but she's got a white coat on white jacket and she's holding another one another chicken but it's black but it's got this like mane big mane of hair like white almost like big white hair coming down and then the little boy's holding a black chicken that's completely black apart from the red face and there's a picture of a little girl with a dog but she's looking into the pig, pig was it the pigeon chicken coop but there's nothing there but then the picture next to the right and says left looking after chickens is not difficult and can be enormously rewarding if you can find them maybe she's playing hide and seek oh wow I didn't know there were so many different designs on chickens I feel I feel like I'm almost racist I thought chickens all look the same they really don't these above these pictures a pair of beautiful sea brights a true bantam with no large fowl counterpart 
and it's the mo- what it looks like. This is what it looks like. They got um, brown, like light brown uh, skin or feathers or whatever. It looks like someone's doodled on them, like with a marker pen, and made like all these lovely patterns, which might have happened. But it's really intricate. Very beautiful. Wow. Oh, now we've got this one. This is this like a a proper. Um, this is on page eleven. This is the introduction. And they're talking about chickens in the West. Here's one. It's the Buff Sussex. It's a fine, traditional breed and also a good lay. Oh, good layer, sorry. And looks like a boy. Really confident. You know, sticking his, well, it might be a girl, sticking her chest out and bums up in the air. It's really like, look at me, everyone. Wow, there's even more. I didn't know there was different breeds of chickens. I didn't know this. And there's a picture here. And there's four chickens together. And they're all different. All got different colouring. One's got yellow. One's got blue and yellow. One's got yellow, blue and orange. And one's just got a big orange wig on, it looks like a red wig. Oh, it's a cute one here. Choose your chickens. It says, first time keepers should, if they are realistic, straight away reject a large proportion of the named breeds that are available simply on the grounds of their unsuitability. Picking the right breed is more involved than you might think. Hence the title of the book, Choosing and Keeping Chickens. You know the downside of me doing this is I start to become interested in what I'm reading about and now I want to I want to keep chickens now there's another one here beautiful beautiful one very multicolored it's like got a red face and then orange and red mane with a little black beard a little brown beard Looks like a little bit of white poo on there as well. Or maybe it's just crumbles, crumbs from a biscuit. And then the tail is black, but then white, partly white in the middle. Then orange, then red, then brown. And it says here, many factors will influence your choice of breed. This is a colourful... Araucana Bantam male. Wow. Oh, and there's one here to the right. It's called an Indian game. And again, the colouring, the patterns. With this one, it doesn't look like it's been uh, drawn on you can see their individual feathers so what it looks more like is it's been shaved and somebody's glued on nice lots of coloured feather shaped bits of I don't know not tarpaulin but uh, plastic or 
uh, even maybe silky bit of silk it's very nice very well designed so here's a list of the great lays the ones that are great lays bantam versions are just about a quarter the size of their large fowl counterparts as demonstrated by these two well summer females it literally is a core of the size got two together now that looks like it's been photoshopped I'm thinking it's the same bird and they've just copied it shrunk it down and then just posted it next to the same bird but a smaller version I might be wrong so there's a picture of a little boy and a, a, an adult and they are collecting eggs either that or they're putting eggs in to the coop I'm not sure oh no they're collecting collecting fresh eggs is what keeping chickens is all about but egg production varies from breed to breed So they're having a there's a section here called meat or eggs, so I'm gonna skip that. So getting started apparently chickens thrive in good conditions. Unlike the rest of us, eh? But conversely they are intolerant when things aren't right again kind of like everybody if you want your birds if you want to lay your bird no if you want your birds to lay well and to live full and healthy lives you must give them the right facilities to do so so basically treat them well I want to get some chickens now where would I keep them though I've got a cupboard in the bathroom it's not very big but it's possibly big enough for a coop you know I just realised coop rhymes with soup so here's the space and shelter Although keeping chickens is great fun, it has its serious side to anyone who is thinking of getting involved with the hobby must appreciate that it comes hand in hand with a responsibility to the birds So it's there's a pic yeah. It says here your chickens will need to be fed and watered every day without fail. And just in case you don't quite get the grasp of that sentence, there's a picture of a chicken eating. And it's now there's a They're talking about 
shelters. I thought they were called coops. Chicken coops. Oh. oh no, hen houses. So it says here, um, hen houses must be sturdy and well made to ensure a dry but well ventilated environment inside. Oh. Wow, this next one it says choosing a house. So they're going up in size. I, mean, I don't know what the next chapter is going to be a mansion, a yacht, a hen yacht. So it says the golden rule when buying. A hen house is to get the largest that your budget and garden will allow the overcrowding of chickens is something to be avoided at costs so there is a picture of a nice blue thingy like house but with a ramp so they can walk up and like a you know lots of wiring and cake not wire like uh, not wiring as in plugs and they don't need television, I guess. But uh, poultry houses can be simple or ornate. This one features an integral run. That's the ramp, isn't it? And raised roosting compartment. Ideal for the Seroma. Bentums that live in it. Oh, it's a picture here. It's a big, long one, so it's not as high, but it's long. And um, mind you, I don't know how high it is because there's nothing to give it perspective. I mean, it might be a hundred foot tall. There's no way of knowing. Well, it might be two inches tall. I don't know. Uh, so it says external access to the nest boxes is a great convenience factor for easy egg collecting. And then on the right hand side the one that I was talking about um, this house has an external nest box and attached run now here's something that would be quite cool for Andre I think if I was going to get something for him to be in the garden, something like that, but really big, where he could play around in it, 
but still be outside in the fresh air and you know hope you're enjoying all the background sounds of <laughs> it's it's one of those things you know it's like 842 uh, anyway so there's a big one here where it's it's basically so that the um, what are they chickens can all stay inside together so it says if you can't let your birds out an integral run integral run is the next best thing assuming of course that you don't overcrowd it so why is it called an integral run instead of internal run ah, I just realised run rhymes with bum oh squeaky chair time so this next chapter is inside the house oh so you can keep them inside the house here's me thinking I was being silly about having it in the bathroom but I wasn't at all I was quite clever to keep your chickens happy inside the house you must provide them with somewhere to perch and with sufficient space to move around many houses are just too small for the number of hens inside them so I suppose really you'd need quite a big room wouldn't you but then because I don't think I'd want chickens indoors because they're an outdoor you know being outdoor in nature is um, what they are supposed to be isn't it really So it would seem a little bit pooey to keep a keep a chicken in indoors all the time. I mean, even Andre the ferret gets to go outside. Perhaps not as often as he would like. But he does have the run of the flat. 
as well. Oh, space to move. I've closed the doors to the kitchen and closed the windows and hopefully there'll be not huge amounts of background sound. But this is the time of the day where the school kids go to school and there's a school nearby and there's a lady I think it's a lady and or a man I'm not sure I've never looked but I think it's a lady that takes a dog or two dogs and they always bark really, really, really high-pitched, high volume. And she's been coming to the school every morning since I've lived here. And I'm beginning to wonder if she's actually got any children at that school. Because eventually the child is going to have to move to a different school as they grow older anyway I kind of think she just brings the dogs just so they can bark perhaps it brightens her day up I don't know <laughs> So, space to move. Scratching about in a mixture of dirt and vegetation under a canopy of trees is just about as close to heaven as a domesticated chicken can get. Sadly, however, not many of us are able to offer our birds these free range type conditions but we can try I do wonder I think it would be quite nice to live on a farm but have ev all the animals running around and doing whatever they want so no pens no no nothing just you know let the have the horses take shelter in the their own place if they want the pigs can all they can all just hang out together they have cows that can just wander around a big area with sheep and dogs and cats and elephants a couple of crocodiles you know just general general farm animals and chickens of course of course chickens and lots of ferrets I thought what would be good is if, if I don't know I have to look, but I want to find to see if there's a uh, a ferret dating website app, so we can meet someone, a nice young lady, and then they can, you know, perhaps get together and produce lots of little babies, little baby Andres, and 
and uh, they'll be running around and just to have the run of the place to just be so cool that's what I'd like just have a big a big area you know I don't know just a really big big area of untouched ground where all the animals can just live together and have fun yeah that'd be nice lots of little Andres running around little cheeky little little things and because I think Because they would be his kids, I think their DNA, they'll just know naturally that I'm their granddad. So I think they'll just naturally love me. So I'll be a granddad. Yeah. It says here, chickens need as much space as you can give them to remain healthy and happy but it's got a picture of two chickens cooped up that's why it's called a coop you know what I just realised coop also rhymes with hoop So here's the do it yourself. I know all about that. Many keepers prefer not to pay the often inflated prices being asked by commercial suppliers of hen houses and choose instead a more cost effective option making your own adapting a shed or buying second hand are all possibilities ah Yeah, I can see the shed aspect, but even sheds are ex they're not cheap because I was going to buy a shed for my bedroom, which is possibly the weirdest sentence you may hear today. <sighs> the reason behind it is simply because of the background sounds that I am uh, people share with me during the day so like now but you know things like yesterday the lawn mowers were going and uh, you know it's always 
generally something occurring during daytime. So I thought if I got myself a shed and then put the soundproof in that I got on the wall, put that in the shed, inside, maybe outside as well, then I could have potentially zero background sound. And I thought that would be particularly groovy. But, uh, uh, I nearly bought one the other day on the catalogue and that means I didn't have to pay for it there and then but I would pay for it you know over the next few months and it was going to cost £250 and I ordered it then I cancelled the order and then yesterday I think it was I looked at that shed online and it had been reduced down by about £30 I couldn't believe it Hmm. I'll just have a look what other caring for chickens. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Six chickens. And I don't I'm not being prejudiced, but they do all look the same. All of those six chickens. Very, very similar. I'd say they were related. And maybe twins. All six of them. So caring for chickens in much the same way that children are annoying, I mean dependent on adults for ensuring that they eat a healthy and nutritious diet. Chickens rely on their keepers to provide an adequate and correct supply of food. Yum, 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 yum. So now, so this is food and drink. I don't know what chickens eat. I'll probably have to come back to that at another time. Feeding is a key aspect of good poultry husbandry. I don't want to marry them. I like them as friends. That's as far as the relationship goes. Husbandry and whether your birds are to be kept on a free range basis or live their lives in a small run 
you are responsible for striking the right balance with the food that they eat. Oh, this is interesting. Now, this is the weirdest chicken I've seen in my life. Proper punk rocker hairstyle. You know, I imagine if you could hear it. Unless it's a still picture. You know, but if it could, if it could talk, it would probably sing Firestarter. I'm a Firestarter. Ooh, Firestarter. Um, so, <laughs> um, because chickens do not have teeth, they cannot chew their food, which limits what they can eat. Oh, yeah, this is this startling Swiss Appenzella has a horn type comb and crest I don't know about it being startling it looks startled kind of even got a picture of the digestive system of a chicken There's the oesophagus, there's the crop, there's the gizzard, there's the proventriculus, there's the small intestine, there's the cuaca. And then there's the cloaca. Oh, we're still talking about the chickens not having teeth. Leave them alone. You know, it's not their fault. It says the absence of teeth means that chickens break down their food by a combination of mechanical and chemical actions in their digestive systems so that's good a balanced diet the domestication of poultry has diminished a chicken's natural instinct to farage and this combined with restricted conditions and the laying demands we place on the birds means that the way we feed them has never been more important. The types of poultry feed, there's a three little piles, three little piles, not, okay, they're not by piles, I mean uh, piles of food. It's not that kind of book. Types of poultry feed from left to right chick crumbs, pellets, and mash. Ah, oh, look, it says here chickens need a regular supply of grit to aid their digestion. Birds allowed outside will find their own, but it must be provided for all. Birds that are not kept on a 
free range basis. Oh, this is almost Christmassy. Leftovers and treats. Chickens can certainly be fed and will enjoy most natural scraps from the kitchen. Leftover fruit, vegetables, corn cobs, peelings and so on. But remember, if you are offering good quality pellets, nothing much else should be necessary. And also, no chicken nuggets. There's a picture. Oh, look. There's a picture. This is lovely. What a lovely picture. It's got a corn and a cob. Birds enjoying a balanced pellet based diet shouldn't need much else but they do love an occasional treat ah. oh it's now it's telling you how to hold the chicken this is just the headlines I've not been reading any of the actual text Learning how to handle a bird is one of the essentials of good husbandry. Bit sexist, isn't it? What's wrong with wifery? And husbandry, or husbandry, or wifery. Uh, mm, uh. It is important that both you and the birds get used to it because regular hands-on inspections are useful for detecting weight loss and the presence of lice, mites and other parasites. See, I had a similar thing with Andre. I know technically he's not a chicken. But when he was little, he's not technically, I like the word technically, that's my favourite word today. Yeah. When Andre was tiny, 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 he didn't like me very much when I first got him. He didn't like me holding him, but I insisted because it's the only way that he could get used to me. So I kept handling him, and he'd never been handled by a human before because it just he'd been with his mum, and um, he'd only just started eating food, you know, uh, solids, I suppose. And it was often biting me, and you know, it didn't last for long about a week of it. And it was when I first had him, I could put my hand, my thumb and finger, push them together around his neck and he'd still have plenty of plenty of movement in his neck to move around that's how tiny he was I mean it's not that just because I can get my thumb and finger around something doesn't mean it's small I realise that but um, it could be big but it's as far as his neck went I kind of I had to do it so that he couldn't turn his head around 
and bite me, bite my fingers or anything. And I realised that he loved me one night. It was probably a week or two of having him when I was just sitting back in my chair watching television. I think it was a Saturday evening. He climbed up. I think I had, yeah, I had my dressing gown on. He climbed up my leg. And then he climbed. Yeah, he, he jumped up onto the the armrest part where my arm was, and he climbed up my sleeve of my dressing gown on my left my left sleeve, and he went to sleep. And I knew from that moment on that we'd bonded you know he he was happy with me and he was he felt comfortable and safe to just fall asleep on me then he was happy then I knew that and from then onwards he's been good as gold but before that he was very nippy biting me and even after he calmed down a bit after the first few days he was still a handful didn't want to be touched didn't want to be picked up or anything like that but once uh, once he crawled up my leg and into my the sleeve of my dressing gown and just went to sleep he was happy and he was in there for hours I, I was going at one point I had to go to the toilet so I was start trying to hold him so I didn't drop him in the toilet and which would have been quite funny, but obviously not, but like from a visual perspective. And after that, we seemed to have bonded. But it took a little while, because he wasn't, didn't want to be manhandled by anybody. He wanted to be left alone to he basically, I, I picked him up on it. I had a little chat down, you know, chat, chat down. A little chat with him recently. And I said, why is it you just didn't want to be, didn't want me touching you? And he said, he said, look, daddy. I said, what? Well, when I first moved in here, I said, yeah, well, why, why was that big long pause? And he said, I forgot what I was talking about. I said, oh, that's weird. He said, yeah, I know. Tell me about it. I said, well, it just seems a bit weird that you'd be in the middle of a conversation, in the middle of a sentence, you'd just stop like that and there'd be a gap for so long. He said, I didn't actually want you to tell me about it, just it's a figure of speech. Have you not heard it before? Heard what? Heard lots of things been around a while lots of things have been heard by these big old ears of mine he said well, that's not the point of the conversation I said okay what is he said well you started talking about asking me why I didn't give you much time when I first moved in I said yeah yeah why is that he said will you see your carpet I said yeah and do you remember how it used to look before I moved in? I said, yeah. He said, well, that destruction and ruination of that carpet doesn't happen by itself. I said, what do you mean? He said, well, it was a big task to rip up each bit of carpet and everyone near the door and to scratch it and to ruin it and to, you know to ruin every bit of carpet in this flat I knew it was going to be a momentous task but one that I took willingly 
because I've always wanted to accomplish something amazing. I said, do you really think that ruining my carpet is an amazing accomplishment? He said to me something that was quiet. I remember he said, well, Daddy, do you think that talking about chickens for an hour is a great accomplishment? So I had to kind of agree a stalemate on that one, I think. And we had a big hug and went ice skating. So that is the end of this recording and I will speak to you again very soon remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy lots of love